So this is my face when I'm very, very excited because I am. I don't think you want to miss uh, this video. We're going to build on the last video I did, I think last week, on autopilot for everyone. In this one, we're going to download some automations from the UiPath marketplace and enable them in autopilot. We're also going to enable one of my own automations in autopilot. And then we're going to see how those automations can work in tandem. And it's pretty impressive what this stuff can do. So let's get to it. So if you saw last week's uh, video, then you saw how I enabled autopilot for everyone so that you could use it inside of assistant. What I didn't show you is how it actually worked inside of assistant. And we're going to get to that in this video. We're going to start out by going to the UiPath marketplace and download some automations that we can use. There are some out of the box. They're not too impressive. Well, they're actually pretty good, but we like to have a little bit more fun here. So let's jump into my browser and go to marketplace. We can see here that we have uh, different uh, categories of, of stuff. And there's a group here called Autopilot for Everyone Automations. And if we click that, we get a list of, I think, four groups down here. Autopilot for Everyone Productivity, one called Product and Engineering, one called Sales, and then there's an admin app that I'm very excited to have a look at a little bit later. But we're going to download this package called Autopilot for Everyone Productivity. If we click on it, we can read a little bit about what kind of activities are included in this uh, package. And the one that we are going to use is uh, one to generate a PDF file and also one to send an email using Outlook. But we'll download the package. You need to be logged in to, uh, to download the packages. I am, so I'll just click download. And in just a few seconds, it should finish downloading this uh, package. Then what you want to do is you want to move into your automation cloud. Specifically, you want to go into automation ops. I've already opened that in a tab here. So here we are in automation ops and you want to go into the solutions management uh, tab here. And then you want to go to packages and then you want to upload a solutions package. That gives us the option to drag or drop or select a file here. We will go to my downloads folder. There is the autopilot for everyone, productivity, blah, blah, blah. And I'll click open, upload. And there we go. Now the package has been uploaded. Now there's a few steps we need to perform in order to activate this package and deploy it. And we'll need to wait for the status to change from pending as it is right now until it changes. And maybe if I do a refresh right now, it will change. It's actually ready. So now I can click these three dots over here on the right and I can click deploy package. I'm going to install these as a new folder under my tenant. We'll just keep the autopilot for everyone productivity automations name because I like it. And we're going to name the folder that is going to be installed in productivity. And I'll click continue. In this page, I'll just need to click validate and wait for a second. Validation successful, no errors have been found. And then I can click deploy. And now we are back in this page and we can see that here there is an install in progress and we'll just need to wait for that to complete. And I'll just hit the refresh button over here a couple of times. It can take a minute or two, but let's see how it's doing. It's actually successful already. So now I can click these three buttons again and activate the deployment. Now I need to type that very long name that I selected to keep uh, for my uh, automation package. I'll just cheat a little bit and copy it from here and paste it down here. Now, what it says in this pop-up is that there are a number of steps that you need to make sure are completed in order for all of these automations to work. Among those things is that you need to make sure that any automations that you use from this package that are dependent on an integration service uh, connection, for example, to Outlook uh, 365, uh, to open AI or to whatever service that the um, automation uses, you need to have those uh, connections in place. I already have a connection in place for Outlook 365, and that's the one we're going to use in this video. So I'll just click uh, activate deployment, and then I kind of know that things will work once we get to that point. So now we have activated 
the deployment of these new activities. So if we go into my uh, normal orchestrator here, and I just uh, hit F5, we can now see that we have a productivity folder here. And inside of that productivity folder, we have a bunch of new subfolders. One for Concur, DocuSign, file, file automations, Google, OneNote, Outlook, and so on and so on and so on. So we have a bunch of new automations. If I go into the file automations, for example, and uh, click the processes uh, icon up here, we can see that there's a couple of automations, one to create a CSV file, one to create a document. And if we look at uh, the description of uh, this last automation, we can see that it creates a PDF or Word file with the provided text. Cool, I like it. But they're just automations, really. They're just automations. And one thing we didn't, well, maybe we did. No, I don't think we did. One thing we didn't look at in the last video was uh, how these automations are enabled to be used by autopilot. And if we click the create document automation here and select edit, what we can see, maybe we did look at this in the last video, I don't care. We'll click next, go to the last page here, and we can see that there's a bunch of properties down here that are set. And these are properties that help autopilot determine how it can use this automation. Also, we can see that it is tagged with the autopilot tag, and that also helps uh, that, um, that enablement. So, cool. We, we now have um, a bunch of new automations that autopilot can use. How about if we have our own automations? Well, in my demos folder here, actually, before we get to that, if you kind of like this video or think you might like the rest of it, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell, all of that stuff. It really does help my channel that you, uh, that you give a thumbs up or subscribe to it. So, so please do that if, if, if you want. If not, don't, but please do it. Please. So anyways, um, we have a couple of automations here. We have one called get customer balance that will get the uh, account balance of a customer provided a customer ID, or we can use the get customers automation to simply get a list of all customers. These customers are stored inside a very simple uh, entity in a data service. I have a tab open for that as well. We can see the customers entity here. If we go into that and click the data tab, we can see here that we have uh, three customers in my customer list. Uh, Jasmine Thai, it's a really good uh, Thai restaurant in Engelholm in Sweden that I go to every now and then. <laughs> um, there's uh, Bones, which is just like a spare ribs place here in, in the town where I live. And then there's Round Table Pizza that doesn't exist anymore in what used to be my hometown of Issaquah, Washington in the US. Um, but these are the three restaurants. So one in Sweden, one in Denmark, and one in the US, or two in Europe and one outside of Europe. We'll get back to that later. But please note, it doesn't say Europe or not Europe anywhere in here. It just says what country and city these restaurants are in. So let's get out of data service again and then go back to our process. If we want to use the get customers process inside of Orpilot, we could, as we could see with the uh, productivity automations, we could go into the edit uh, menu here and go next and next into this last page and we could type in all of the different properties that you need to type in in order to enable this automation for autopilot or we could go into our admin section go into our ai trust layer and then go to autopilot for everyone select the tenant and because this tenant has autopilot for everyone installed and is active we can go to automation properties down here here we can select the folder for an automation that we want to enable for autopilot. So we select the demos folder. We select the get customers automation. We can give a description of the automation here so that autopilot knows what the automation does. Now I did already describe that over in the process in orchestrator, but I'm going to uh, write a short description here as well. Returns a list of customers. That's it. We'll enable it for autopilot. We'll also set it as a pre-response action. That means that autopilot can trigger this automation without asking us for confirmation that it needs to use this automation. So now I did that and saved the changes. If I now go back to orchestrator and go into that, um, that process again, get customers, edit, next, next, we can see that it has been tagged with the autopilot tag and also that a couple of properties has been set that enable this automation for autopilot.
So I'll cancel back out of that. And basically now we've set up a bunch of automations. We've set up the productivity automations and we've set up this one automation that I built myself. So what can we use this for? Well, let's try and start Assistant. And as we saw in the last video, once Assistant starts, it's going to do sort of a little bit of a refresh, load in all of the automations that it has access to, stuff like that. And we can see the interface here that Autopilot sort of provides for us. And if we want, we can go into the settings here and we can, down here under automations, we can see that now there's a, well, this wasn't here before, just trust me. There's a list of all of the automations that we have just uh, sort of activated for use in Autopilot. So what can we do? Well, we can prompt Autopilot down here. For example, we could uh, have it create a PDF file. Create a PDF with the first verse of the Spanish version of Silent Night. Just because. And we'll hit enter. And it's analyzing my request and then it's trying to make use of most likely the uh, the create file or create PDF automation. And uh, it has uh, sort of found the first version, the first verse of that song. And now it's uh, asking us, okay, do you want to use um, this automation called create document? I'll just confirm it and hit run. And now it's doing exactly what I told it to do. So if I go into my downloads folder over here, we can see here that we actually have one called uh, mm, uh, something, my Spanish is not what it used to be, but uh, it just created this uh, just now. And so if I open the PDF, we can see uh, it's not formatted very nicely, but this is the uh, first verse of the Spanish version of Silent Night, I guess. It's Christmas, I'm kind of in that mood. So we'll close the PDF again. What else can we do? Well, we could ask it for the list of customers. And hopefully it's just going to give me that list from its understanding of the automation that I activated just a minute ago. So it's now running the get customers automation. And here we go. Here's the list of my three uh, restaurants, Round Table Pizza, Bones, and Jasmine Thai in Sweden. Now I could also say just the customers in Sweden, please. Let's see how it does. And there's only one restaurant in Sweden, so it gives us that. So we know that it can build a PDF. It, we know that it can give us a, a list of customers. It can even filter that list of customers. Now we filtered on Sweden and Sweden was part of the data inside of our customers list. But what if we wanted to, for example, send a list of European customers as a PDF attachment to my email address. Let's see how it does. So it's analyzing my request and trying to figure out what automations do I have at my disposal to fulfill the request that the guy at the keyboard just gave it. So now it's kind of trying to figure that out. It's trying to create the document, we'll say, yeah, go ahead and do that. And then hopefully after that, it's going to try and create an email with that document attached. And we'll see how it does. It has created the document. Now it's creating an email. Um, we're going to select save as draft equals false because otherwise you won't actually send the email. And all of these things that I have to sort of tell it to do, this can be configured to be done automatically. Also, every time that I ask it to do something, it's going to give us a few follow-up questions. We'll see that in just a second here, probably. Um, let's see, now it's done. And now it's, it's asking me, do you want to do this, that, or the other? But I'll try to log into my uh, email and I'm not going to show you everything, but I'll I'll find the email so you can see it. So here we go. I just received an email. Uh, Dear Eva, please find attached a PDF containing the list of European customers as requested. The list includes for the de the details for the following companies: Bones in Denmark and Jasmine Thai in Sweden. So it left out 
the round table pizza restaurant in Washington state in the U S because it's not in Europe. So let's just take a quick step back and see how it did all of this. Let's look at the prompt that we gave to autopilot just a few minutes ago, send a list of European customers as a PDF attachment to my email address. This is sort of a chain of small automations. The send to an email address was handled by the uh, send outlook message automation that we downloaded in that productivity pack. The uh, list of European customers was handled by the automation that I built myself that retrieved data from the data service. And then the filtering out of the non-European customers that was handled by the LLM magic that we've sort of come to know in the last couple of years, very exciting stuff. And then the PDF attachment part was handled by the create document automation that was also part of that productivity pack. So lots of, of small automations and other technologies involved in sort of fulfilling the request that I made to autopilot to create a list of European customers, put them into a PDF file and send that as an attachment to an email address. And that's really, really exciting. And that whole notion of talking to, uh, to autopilot, that's, I think what's coming also when we start talking about agentic automation, and that's coming to you, path in hopefully just a few months in agentic automation, you'll be able to tell an agent to take care of some tasks for you and it will handle them almost autonomously. It of course needs to have automations at its disposal, but that conversation between all of your automations in how they're described and the platform that I think will be more or less the same as we see now in autopilot, but it's very exciting stuff. So if you're not in love with autopilot yet, I doubt you have a heart because I think this is really, really exciting stuff. I think small automations are coming back bigger than ever, if that makes any sense. But this chaining together of small isolated automations that can do one thing, but can be employed by something semi-intelligent. I think that's really, really powerful. And I think we'll see a lot of small um, automations in our deployments going forward. I think we'll see very intelligent um, ways of uh, of using those automations, of course, autopilot for everyone is one of them. Agentic will be another and who knows what else is to come. Um, I hope you liked this video. Give it a thumbs up. If you did subscribe to my channel, um, there is going to be another video coming, I think here, sort of somewhere in here in just a few days down here in this corner, there's something else you can watch over here. You can subscribe to my channel and I just hope you enjoyed this one. And I thank you for watching it. See you next time.